Templar is really a product of the industry, really, because I got forced to be here. Um, I got forced to really start um, my own thing because I was never going to be accepted by a bigger agency because they didn't see me as a creative director. And, uh, and, and an offshoot of that is uh, because I'm bringing all my experience and my, my, the background and the issues in my background. So come, uh, living as a refugee, living in poverty, uh, receiving charity as a, um, as a child growing up. Um, you know, I've got personal things I, I see as key issues around the world that I think design should um, be a part of that dialogue, you know, the global dialogues. It was never going to be, I, I can never do the Stop Torture um, project, which we started the whole company around. That project would never exist in any other agency. I had to set up Templar to be able to create that space for it to be spoken about. Um, and really the design um, propelled the propelled the, um, the awareness about what was happening in, in Sri Lanka. Um, this is just a tiny example, but um, I, I really think I want to see more, I, I hate using, you know, people of colour, um, or I just want to see more people from diverse backgrounds and, and more melanin, uh, if you like, um, in the boardrooms, um, because I think that's where actual change happens. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing it now. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in boardrooms. I'm, I'm, I'm tussling with boards and, and, and that once you get to that sort of space, it's a very, you, you, you know, you can make real positive change. Um, and I think, you know, I, I grew up, uh, Forrest, uh, you know, building on what Forrest was saying, um, I grew up not seeing that role model for me. So um, mm -hmm. and it's as I travel around the country, more and more students from um, different backgrounds are saying, Pally, you're the first speaker we've had from that doesn't look like everyone else. Yes, I, we definitely get a lot of specificity now in RFIs and RFPs about uh, diverse teams. And I think that's just, um, you know, the, the transparency um, that the industry is starting to, um, you know, to have to kind of, um, you know, um, you know, expose itself to in terms of, you know, um, the, the briefs, who, who's been commissioned, why are they commissioned, what were some of the decision criteria. And I think there's much more pressure, um, which is good, on looking at diverse vendors. Um, although I do think that there is, um, there's something that I think, you know, we, we, we were kind of skirting around earlier, which is, um, you know, the market will always demand something, you know, that is seductive and sellable. So the market's not actually going to, to drive the change, right? And um, there may be a way to signal in the market, which I think is to, to Polly's point about virtue signaling, which is for kind of short-term returns, but they're really not addressing systemic issues. And then I think there's functional tokenism, which I think is Natasha spoke about, which is, you know, hire a bunch of junior hires, but don't necessarily retain them. They provide the, the culture of inclusion. But I do think there's a fundamental shift, right, from going from kind of power centered, where you're still, those with power are still retaining power, to really actually thinking about a reframe that I would love to see us all make in the industry, which is, we know the data into things you spoke to, John, and some of the other things that um, I think McKinsey came out with a report. Neurodiverse teams just simply outperform, you know, homogenous teams. So we know that this is true. So there has to be a way in which we can start talking about diversity, equity, inclusion as actually a competitive advantage, and not necessarily as an obligatory fashion where we're talking about penalization, but actually how can we run towards this because we want to create neurodiverse teams to optimize our cultures, to optimize our production, to create more competitive, you know, products and things and experiences if not anything else than just simply money. <laughs> um, if, we can, if we can use a carrot and a stick approach, yeah. I think that we need to start to reframe diversity, equity, and inclusion because we have the data that supports it, uh, but how do we drive it out of tokenism to really kind of neurodiverse optimization? Natasha, I'd, I'd be interested in um, your experience of uh, having set up a very successful um, design agency and, and now an innovation agency aligned with one of the big management consultancies and your experience and how that um, compares and contrasts uh, when the two different environments? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, it's actually more exciting to be part of it at a bigger level. I'm now part of a 500,000 person company. Um, and what's exciting to me about that is 
being able to drive change at a big level, it's very different from being a 50 person company, which is what we were. Um, and we have a brilliant uh, inclusion and diversity board in Accenture Interactive that I'm part of, and we're planning on making real change. But there's also the fact that I know from an exec leadership, they feel really passionately and unequivocally about this. And that makes me feel comfortable speaking up and helping drive change, which is a huge first step. I haven't seen that in many large organizations. It's also enabled me to work on a project that I wouldn't have been able to work on as an independent agency. Um, so we're working on a project with Mobo called Mobilize. Um, and Accenture have, have, have part funded and, and supported this project. And the idea is to create a platform to enable and empower black employees to get more of the jobs they want, particularly in creative and tech industries. And for employers, because I think it only works if you've got both sides, for employers to drive true cultural and systemic change in their organizations. So like Forrest was saying, KPIs, metrics, measures, so that people don't just talk about it. They, there's something out there that will help us drive and sustain change within or organizations and hold ourselves accountable and stick to it. But also I think we need that consistency and consensus as an industry because of what I'm seeing is, I saw a, a, an article on the drum a few weeks ago about different agencies around the world, what they'd pledged after Black Lives Matter and what they were doing and how many had achieved what they said they would do. And it's it's a minefield, there's so much stuff out there. And I think we need to try and get rid of that sense of competition and individualism and actually go, as an industry, we need to change this. Get rid of yeah. competition and do it together. Consensus and everybody moving that way is going to be the best for the whole. So I think we need to, to, to take traditional competitiveness out of this and make consistent change together. Thank <laughs> you.